12. How stressful is teaching on a scale of 1 to 10? Right now with COVID and when we were teaching during COVID, I have to say... No, it's some niggas that's doubting me, but that's only making me better. They can't see what's inside of me, so they didn't know I was special. My mind on a whole nother level, I already looked at... What's up, my dime squad? It's your girl, Dime Lachey, and I'm back with another video. As always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you press the subscribe button so you can join the dime squad, squad, squad. You know how we do. So before I get into the video today, I just want to let my dime squad know. I have decided to post twice a week. These days will be on Mondays and Wednesdays. So make sure the notification bell is pressed so that you will not miss out. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. So today is going to be episode one of my new teacher series called That Lit Teacher Life. So make sure, make sure you're subscribed so that you will not miss other episodes. So episode one today is going to be a teacher Q&A. Now this will be part one to my Q&A because I have a thousand questions that I'm going to answer. So this will be part one. Stay tuned for part two. Um, if you see me looking down, that's because I have the questions written down and of course I cannot remember them off the top of my head. So let's get right into number one. Number one, how old are you? I turned 23 in June. I am a cancer zodiac. Number two, what grade do you teach? I teach sixth grade and I love it. Number three, what made you become a teacher? Well, um, in third grade, I had this awesome teacher. I'm not going to put her name on here because I'm not sure if she wants to sit on here. Um, I had an awesome teacher who really left a great impact on my life. She um, was the first teacher to actually build a relationship with her students. And that really made her stand out from my other teachers as far as like second, first, and kindergarten. So um, she was the first teacher to um, build a relationship with us, you know, get get to know us she made class fun and exciting and she actually taught um all subjects and um she put a great focus on science because she knew that major majority of her students um struggle with science so she made science so fun and i was one of the students who really struggled with science like i've always not liked science for some weird reason and she, that was the first time that i actually enjoyed the subjects and i really um once i got older i always thought back to her in her classroom and i always thought like she had such a great impact like i rarely remember many of my teachers but her i can't forget her so um she really motivated me to become a teacher because i want to have that same impact on my students and um yeah so teacher motivation maybe i can motivate some of you guys <laughs> All right, let's get into number four. Did you ever consider another career? Yes, I have considered another career. When I first graduated high school, um, I wanted to be a dentist. And let me tell y'all the reason why. I had braces like my ninth and 10th grade year. And my ninth grade year, when I first got braces, I was just so amazed at like how they put them on at like how you had to take care of them. Like everything about braces amazed me. And um, I would be so, so excited to go to the orthodontist. I would be so excited to go to the dentist. And I was just like amazed. And then when I got them off, I was so sad because I wanted them back. And it was just so amazing how my teeth shifted. And it just amazed me so much to where I, my major when I graduated college was dentistry. Yes. I always deep down in my heart i did want to be a teacher i did but once i got braces like the immaturity in me was just so amazed with braces that i thought i wanted to be a dentist so yeah i did have a different major um number five how many years did you attend college um i have my bachelor's degree and it the normal time takes four years but i was able to graduate in three so that's always good what how i graduated in three was i basically did an overload of classes instead of um instead of just doing what they recommend the least they recommend 
I took an overload and that's what led me to graduate in three instead of four years. Number six, what college did you go to? I went to Troy University in Troy, Alabama. Go Trojans. Number seven, um, how hard is the certification exam? So to be to get certified to become a teacher, there are two exams that I had to pass to get certified. Now this is only in the state of Alabama. It varies per state. Your state might have different, just depends on where you are. So if you're a, a prospective teacher and you're wondering, you know, um, how hard the certification exam is or what the exam is, I encourage you to Google because that's probably where you're gonna get your answer. But as far as Alabama, um, the first exam we had to take was called the Praxis. Now, um, I am elementary, so I had to take the elementary Praxis. For example, if you have a history degree, then you would have to take the history Praxis to become certified as a history teacher. So, um, with me being elementary, of course, um, there are diff there are multiple subjects that you teach. Math, science, reading, um, social studies. And I'm missing one. Math, science, reading, social studies. Yeah, that was it, I think. Math, science, reading, and social studies. So that was a this was a four part praxis. Can't even talk. This was a four part praxis. And as far as like how hard it was, um, it just depends on you. Like me, I'm very, very strong in reading and math, but I'm not so strong in science and social studies. Social studies was more like memorization. Um, science was more like either, was more like experimental and like graphs. So, um, yeah. Uh, if you're like me, I had to actually study for social studies. Like I had to buy like a study packet and study for social studies. Um, and science actually, and science, because those are my lowest. So it just depends on you. Reading and math, I had the first time. It was very easy. So like I said, it just depends on you. And the second certification process or test, you can call it, that we have in um, Alabama is called NTPA. Now, NTPA was stressful. It was so hard. But I wouldn't say it was, yeah, it was hard. It was very hard. And our college really put a great, a big, big emphasis on it. And like they supported us so much. They helped us so much. So that made it, you know, we were able to deal with it better. But um, ATBA is like a portfolio based assessment that um, you basically have to put together this portfolio. And the portfolio has to have like videos of you teaching and then you have to have specific things in each video. You have to differentiate your instruction. You have to show how you did it. Um, you have to include your lesson plans. You had to include pictures of samples that the kids did. Um, your lesson plans had to be very, very descriptive, like so in-depth. Um, yeah, it was like every little thing to the T had to be your portfolio. And that along with teaching every day for the first time, it, it, it got kind of stressful there. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to say about the certification is in number eight what is your what was your major my major was elementary education which certifies me to teach kindergarten through the sixth grade so right now i'm teaching sixth grade which is the highest i could ever go with my major number nine are you going back to school to get your master's um i am going back to school to get my master's i actually start january 2021 woo, woo, woo. i'm getting my master's in counseling school counseling and for that degree, you have to be teaching for at least two years. And I meet my two-year mark, January 2021. So, I'm excited about that. And, yeah. Um, Number 10, did you choose what grade you teach? So, no and yes. So, basically, it just depends on you. So, um, me, I, did, I prefer elementary but I prefer upper elementary. Sixth grade is a part of upper elementary. So, um, as far as elementary, I prefer the elementary setting. I prefer the elementary setting, but I would still, in the elementary setting, prefer third through sixth. So, I mean, third through fifth. So, um, 
as far as like choosing what grade, when you go, and my dog is sneezing, when you go in interview for a position, the principal will let you know um, what they have available. So once you find a school that you're interest, interested in and you see that they're hiring, you, you fill out the application, you get called for the interview, um, the, that principal will let you know what grades they have available or what grades they want to offer you. And you can either accept or decline. A principal is not going to want you to um, feel uncomfortable or, you know, teach a grade you're not comfortable with. So if you, that's why I kind of say yes and no. Because if you're desperate to get into the, get go ahead and get into the classroom and teach no matter what grade, you're just ready and you're willing to teach whatever, then you won't really choose what you teach. What you, teach. you just go, you know, you just go with it. But... If you're the type of person that is specific on a grade, it might take you a little while longer to get through the interview process and get into the classroom. So yeah, number 11, how many students do you have? So I teach middle school. So um, the students go to five classes. So I teach the same lesson five times a day. Last year, I had about 150 students. I have a little list. So each class range from about 25 to 30, sometimes more, sometimes less. It just depends. And um, times five. So yeah, I have a lot of students. And I love them all. All right, number 12. How stressful is teaching on a scale of one to 10? Right now with COVID and when we were teaching during COVID, I have to say 10. If, if the scale went above 10, it would be above 10 because it's very, very stressful um, teaching during the COVID-19, which was the last time I taught. It was during the COVID-19 um, and it was on, fully online. And I'm going to make a video about that, like teaching during the pandemic. That's going to be one video. But yeah, it would definitely be a 10 just because of all the things that come with it. And, you know, yeah, I'll get into that in another video. But yeah, if all of this wasn't going on and, you know, we were normal and this wasn't happening, then I would stay a seven. Being that I'm still new, I still have a lot to learn. So I get stressed about any little thing and I want everything to be to the T and I really hate making mistakes, even though we all make them. It's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. I tell my students that all the time. It's okay to make mistakes. So, Yeah. I would say about a six or seven during the regular school year. Um, number 13, what are your thoughts on teaching during the pandemic? This is a very touchy topic, so I'm not going to say much about it. First, I would say teaching during the pandemic is very stressful and it's very, very unfortunate. Like at the end of the day, I signed up, I signed up to be a teacher. So whatever the district choose, I am going to do it. For not even just for myself, but for my students, and because that's what I do. So um, even though I might not agree with some things that are decided upon, you know, it's it's out of my control. But praying for all my teachers out there. If you're a teacher and you're watching this, I am praying for you. I am, and I'm praying for myself, and that through this all we will get through it. And I pray for my kiddos, my future kids, my previous kids. Because we this this has hit us all, and um, it's very unfortunate. And at the end of the day, our students' health are number one priority. Our health is number one priority. Our family's health number one priority. So I just try to keep that in mind at all times. So yeah, that's all I'm saying about that. All right, number fourteen. How do you manage teacher salary? So, uh, of course, we all know teachers are underpaid, but um, me and myself, I only take care of myself. It's just me. And um, so I'm able to manage the salary a little bit better. But I, I do sometimes think about those who have a family, have multiple kids, you know, and I want to have kids someday. So as far as managing salary, number one, I, I have made a commitment to be a lifelong learner so i am getting my master's which will boost my salary 
I will get a raise from that. Um, and also, my mom was very strict on saving. Still is. So, since I've started teaching from every check, I put a certain amount into my savings. If I ever make any extra with, like, another job or um, something I'm doing on the side, I would put that into my savings. So, I'm really big on saving, and that's honestly how I manage my teacher salary. All right, number 15, how many years have you been teaching? January makes two years. I've been teaching for one and a half years. I um graduated in December, and which in the school year starts in August. So I came in mid year, mid year. A teacher had just retired, and I came in mid year, and um yeah, January twenty twenty. What's twenty nineteen? <laughs> January twenty nineteen is when I started teaching, and um I've been teaching since. So I finished off that year. And then in August, I started my first year, like, starting off by myself. So, like, um, and I never taught a full year, like a full school year. I have, but, like, not, like, in person because of COVID-19. So, August, I was like, ooh, full year of teaching. I'm going to get it. But then it was cut off by COVID. Even though I taught online, it, it's not the same. I'm pretty sure we all can agree on that. It's not the same. Number 16, what is your number one classroom management tip? My number one classroom management tip would be to stay consistent. Stay consistent. Anything you say you're going to do, do it. Anything you say you're not going to do, do it. That's with anything, 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 anything. You have to stay consistent with your classroom management and with your students. You have to, because once they see a little leniency or they see that you're not a woman of, of your word or a man of your word, it, it's not going to be good. So I always would say, stay consistent. And that was actually a tip given to me when I started teaching, stay consistent. And I really had to learn for myself because I was consistent at first and I'm going to give y'all some story time. So, I'm going to give y'all some story times in another episode, okay? So, stay tuned. <laughs> Number 17, where do you shop for classroom decorations? Okay, so, Target Dollar Spot is my favorite. Amazon is my favorite. I do shop on Teachers Pay Teachers for, like, um... Stuff I can laminate, like small things I can laminate. I can just print and laminate and use. Um, I shop at School Aids, like the local school store. I would shop there for like um, posters, big things. You know, posters. Um, they have good manipulatives. Um, so, yeah. Number 18. Does the schools decide what grades you teach? It was kind of like a question that I already answered. Um, the school, the principal decides or, um, will tell you what grades they have available. It's up to you whether you want to accept or decline. If you feel like that grade is not for you, then don't go for it. If you feel like it is and you're comfortable, you're going to be comfortable and the school gives you, the school fits you, then go for it. But no. You kind of decide which grade you teach. Number 19, what is your dream grade to teach? I really don't have a dream grade to teach. I honestly would teach them all. But I can say my preferred grade is third through six. Now, in um, like I said, I love, love, love the elementary setting. And where I student taught at, elementary was K through six. Like K through six were all in one school. So, like, um, being that K through 6 were all in one school, I was I, student taught in 6th grade, which is, I love 6th grade. But, um, it was, they still had, it was still in the elementary setting. So, with that being said, 3rd through 5th, definitely. If 6th was a part of elementary, it would definitely be 6th. So, yeah. Um, number 20. One big advice 
for a new teacher. So the biggest advice I can give for a new teacher is, let me think about myself as a new teacher. For a new teacher, hmm. Build a relationship with your students as a new teacher. My biggest advice would be to build a relationship with your students. Soon, day one, like starting day one. And by saying that, I mean, learn their names. Like me, I have 150 students. So it takes me about two and a half weeks. You know, you, you learn some quicker than others because some have a more bubbly and more personality than others. So you can't help but to know their name. So, um, yeah, learn the names as quick as, you, quick as you can. That's one step in building the relationships. Make sure that... um. You talk to them, like be realistic, have a conversation, get to know their likes, their dislikes, get to know, cause you know, the quicker you get to know them, the quicker you're, they will begin to trust you because they have a relationship with you. They will begin to trust you. They will um, listen to you. They will do what you ask because y'all have that relationship. You want how to differentiate your instruction around that class, group of students or that student small group. So yeah, definitely get to know your students. Build that relationship starting day one. Day one, not day three, not day four, day one. I promise you will have the greatest results. And that completes my teacher Q&A. Make sure, make sure, make sure you stay tuned for episode two of That Lit Teacher Life. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, remember, I am posting one time on Mondays and one time on Wednesdays. So make sure you have that notification bell pressed. And I will see you guys in the next video.